friend out in a cafe in Ryslip and we heard Rachel's friend Joe sh shouting her name um, and I came around the corner from the kitchen and spotted Rachel. She looked rigid as if she was having um, a fit. Um, so I helped her off the chair and got her into the recovery position and I was checking her pulse and we realised that she wasn't very well at all and the owner, Catherine, phone for the ambulance straight away and I just kept monitoring it until Andy turned up, thankfully very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well I arrived probably only two minutes from when I got the call I think. I walked in, uh, Rachel was in the recovery position, this lady looking very, looking very worried. Um, she did look initially like it was a seizure but when I turned her to look I could see her breathing was very agonal which means you're hardly breathing at all. Your, your mouth is moving, but you're not taking any air in. I then realised that she's, uh, I couldn't feel any, any, any central pulses. So at that point, I uh, popped a defibrillator on, so put pads on her, um, cut some clothes off, unfortunately, put some pads on, and she was in what we call VF arrest, and so I shocked her to try and get the heart started. Didn't get it started straight away, um, and then I got Judy um, to do um, some CPR for me. So we have a button on our machine that will do the rhythm for her, so she can follow it, follow the bleep. Then the crew arrived and um, we managed to get her heart started, to get her breathing again. So it's a fantastic story. It's like, you know, I've been doing this job a long, long time, through over three decades. And it's probably one of my best success stories in that, time, that, that period of time. Because um, Judy started the process before Andy arrived and they worked as a team, um, my outcome was amazing compared to what people have told me it could have been. So I think really, you know, the cards were against me, that was the, the cards for that day, but everybody um, who was available helped me and just helped me to get to the outcome that I've got. Those statistics of out-of-hospital arrest are really appalling compared to the rest of Europe. And I thought, well, as a school, what can we do about that? So we um, got someone in to do training for the children, and so by the end of today, um, 310 children will know how to do CPR. I hope they never have to, but if they do, I'd like to think in some way we've equipped them with a life skill and they've been extremely excited about the thought that if they had to, they might be able to save somebody's life.